Hey everybody, today we're going to be going over the digital SAT math sample questions. Uh, some of you might already know that um, I already did a video on the sample questions back in 2022. However, the production quality of that video was really, really bad. And uh, I, I also didn't use Desmos, so I kind of wanted to remake the video um, with better quality and using Desmos. So that's what we'll be doing today. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been really supportive and a lot of those older videos that really didn't have the best audio or, or video quality. Um, I think a lot of that was the charm, right? <laughs> that was kind of the charm of the channel. Um, you know, it's just me first starting out. But why don't we give this another go and give it a much cleaner and easier to follow presentation. All right, let's get started. All right, so for question one, Probably the first thing I want to do is I want to actually find what f of 2 and g of 2 are. So let's do that kind of off to the side. So f2, so you see x plus 7. So I'm going to do 2 plus 7, which is 9. And then g of 2, whenever you plug something in and it's touching something like a coefficient or an exponent, um, you probably want to put parentheses. Even if you're not sure, just put parentheses anyway, just to play it safe. So 7 times 2, 7x, 7 times 2 is 14. So f of 2 is 9, and g of 2 is 14. So now we are going to put that into the expression. So 4f of 2 minus g of 2. And we're going to kind of swap those guys out. So 4 times 9 minus 14, and 36 minus 14, uh, that should be 26, 22. And I believe that is our answer. Let me check. Answer choice C. That is correct. We can also do this guy entirely on Desmos. So let's switch to Desmos real quick. OK, so first we're going to type in f of x. Then we're going to type in g of x. And then we're going to type in 4f of 2 minus g of 2. And we see the answer is 22. Let's move on to the next one. OK, so for this question, we really don't really need to know anything about a, a y-intercept. We're going to talk about that later. But let's just do it, because they kind of gave us what we need to know, right? So um, we're going to plug in y for y, and we're going to plug in 0 for x. So let's make x 0. And negative 6 times 0, um, uh, my, so that's 0 minus 32 is just negative 32. So it seems y is negative 32. And that should be our answer. Now, a couple of things you're going to want to know y equals mx plus b. b is the y-intercept, the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. So you could have just looked at this, because this is mx plus b of a line, slope-intercept form of a line. So you could have just looked there to get the y-intercept. The y-coordinate is negative 32. Um, and something else you're probably going to want to know, I'll put this in pink, how about? To find an x-intercept, they don't have to tell you this. They could have just said, find the y-intercept, and they could give you any equation. So to find the x-intercept, you plug in y equals 0. And to find the y-intercept, um, you plug in x equals 0. So you see you're kind of always plugging in the opposite letter. And we can, of course, do this entirely on Desmos as well. So we're going to do that. y equals negative 6x minus 32. So um, all you have to do to find the x and the y-intercept of any graph on Desmos is to click on it. So I click on the x-intercept. And I see it's negative 5.333. Okay, let's see what that is. Negative 5.3333333333. That is negative 16 over 3. Okay, so the x-intercept is negative 16 over 3, comma 0. And the y-intercept is 0, comma negative 32. So all you got to do is click on it. Um, I go over this in my 
one of my Desmos videos. Very helpful. Uh, all right, let's move on. Okay, so for this one, one of the interpretations of um, there's kind of two ways we probably want to think about slope for this one. You could pick out two points and use y2 minus y1. Um, but slope is the change in y when x goes up by 1. And it's also rise over run. So I'm kind of going to use both at the same time here. So rise over run. What you do is you pick out two points that go through corners. So this one goes through a corner. And then the one right next to it goes through a corner too, right? So we just went up by one. So we don't even need to do a calculation. But you see, if you draw a little, like, I know this is hard because it's so tiny, guys. But if you draw a little, like, triangle there, the rise, because it's going up, is positive. So that's positive 25. And the run, always go left to right. So your run is always positive. So you just have to think about the rise. If the rise is negative, your slope is negative as long as you're always going left to right, like a book. So the run is 1. 25 over 1 is 25. Okay, so right away, the question is asking me about the slope. And I see that the slope is 25. So anything that doesn't mention the number 25 kind of immediately has to be wrong. Now, so some common keywords for slope are that indicate rates of change are per and each. So do you see how this one says each game costs $25? That sounds right to me. The video game system costs $25. Uh, no, they're not. Um, uh, that's probably mixing and matching the y-intercept. This is my best guess for this problem, is the y-intercept, the video game system costs $100, which, by the way, is nowhere near accurate. All of them cost at least $150 or $200, right? Um, and um, anyway, so the video game system costs $100, and then they're buying games. But that would only be, and that's not even right, that's 25, it should be 100. So my guess is, I think answer choice B is the y-intercept. So it's like right, but it's not what the question's asking you. You guys kind of see what I'm saying? And then C and D are just mixing them up. So those are both just wrong no matter what they're asking you. Um, so this guy's the slope and this guy's the y-intercept. Um, not really much you can do with Desmos on this one. I suppose you could find the equation and graph it, but that would kind of be a waste of time. OK, so for this one, if you're not going to use Desmos, then um, we probably need to Really, the only thing we can do is guess and check. I'm not going to go through all of them because I, you know, you guys can probably figure it out. But um, why don't I go through one wrong and then the one that's right? So you guys can kind of see. So I'm going to do B. So let's do two comma one. So Y is one. So one is less than negative four. X is two times two plus four. I just plugged in X into there, and then Y into there. Okay, so now we get 1 is less than negative 8 plus 4. And negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. 1 is less than negative 4. Okay, 1 is less than negative 4. That's not right. That's not true. Neg all negative numbers are smaller than all positive numbers. So um, that is wrong. So we're going to cross that out. And... Um, we're going to do the correct answer now. So I believe it's negative 4 comma 0. So let's plug that in. 0 is less than negative 4. x is negative 4. So negative 4 plus 4. Negative 16. No, positive 16 plus 4 would be 20. 0 is less than 20. That is correct. So this point is in the solution set. So that is your answer. Now let's jump to Desmos. So I'm going to type in y is less than, and if you were going to do less than or equal to, you just press equal afterwards, but we're not going to do that. Negative 4x plus 4. And now I'm going to plot all the answer choices. So 2, negative 1, and let's call him a. You don't have to put that. You could just leave it. It might be easier if you just leave it as the coordinates. I'm just showing you that you can do that. 2 comma 1. 
B. And again, I'm just going slower for the demonstration, guys. Like, you could do this very quickly. 0, 0,5. And now we're going to do negative 4, 0, which is D. And I am going to make this, how about um, orange? Uh, okay, so now let's, it's, it's kind of tough to tell, I know, guys, because uh, my window on my graph is terrible. But hopefully you can see um, A, B, and C are all not in the solution set, even if they were touching that line, because it's a dashed line, the, the line does not count. If it were a solid line, the line would count. So it's got to be in that red shaded region, and the only one that's in that shaded region is D. So you ever see a question like this? Just type in the inequality, then type in all the answer choices and look at it. There's, it makes it far less likely to make a mistake, even if it maybe makes it take like a couple seconds longer. Great, let's move on. Okay, this is one of those um, like standard form units questions. And I, I've talked about this in a lot of my videos, guys, at this point. So basically what you need to understand is that all the terms in an equation have to have the same units. Right? You can't just you can't just do like, okay, two inches plus three miles equals five centimeters. That does not make any sense, right? doesn't make any sense. They have to all have the same units in order for the equation to work, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bracket around all of, usually this guy on the other side is the thing they tell you the units for. And I see in the problem, they tell us that the perimeter of figure B is 63 inches. So if this term has units of inches, then this term must also have units of inches. And this term must also have units of inches. Okay, so the question is asking us about um, uh, it's the sum of the perimeter of figure A and the perimeter of figure B. So um, uh, it's looking like y has to do with figure b and it's asking us about the interpretation of six so they tell us that um y is the number of sides of figure b okay so y if we break this down y has units of sides and now we need to multiply by something that will cancel out the sides and leave us with units of inches so think about it almost like a unit conversion so we're going to put sides on the bottom to get rid of sides, and then we're going to put inches on top. So you see, we're not actually doing this, but you see that would make the units cancel and would give the whole thing units of inches. So this guy, 6, has units of inches per side. That's how we say that, division, when we divide a unit, inches per side. Um, another way to say that is you could say the each. So it seems like um, um, the correct answer is A. It says each side of figure B has a length of six inches. That's just another way, like inches each side or inches per side. Those are kind of the same thing. Um, it's it's got to have something to do with figure B because the Y is figure B, right? So really anything with figure A is just kind of off right off the bat. And um, uh, the number of sides of figure B, um, no, that's Y. Okay, so that's not right. So this is actually the six. And then each side of figure A has a length of six inches. That's not right. It actually has a length of three inches and the six doesn't even tell us that you see the three right there and then the number of sides of figure a is six that's not right that's kind of talking about x so uh not really a whole lot we can do with desmos for this question let's move on okay this is a very standard systems word problem and um uh, what we're going to do is um, we're going to write one thing 
for the cost. I believe it's store A and one for the cost at store B. So, um, so let's do 5.5. I'm going to need more space to do this. So I'm going to move up a little bit. This is going to be, this is kind of a long one to do by hand. There's no reason to do this one by hand, but I'll do it anyway for the sake of the video. So, um, 5.5 R plus. 3B equals 37, right? 5.5 for raspberries, $3 for blackberries, and then $37 at store A, okay? Now we're gonna do an equation for store B. 6.5R plus 8B equals um, $66 at store B. Now to do this by hand, I'm gonna use elimination. Um, none of this really helps though. Uh, so um, uh, let me kind of um, move this down a little bit so you guys can see. So none of this really helps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rewrite it. Um, 0.5, if you type that in a calculator, that's a half. So I'm gonna clear the denominator. I'm gonna multiply everything in both equations by two. I don't know, you don't have to do this. You could just use a uh, like a numeric. You could just eliminate B because it's a whole number. There's a lot of ways you could do this. Why don't we just do this just for the sake of it? So 5.5 .5 times two, that's 11R plus six B equals, what's 37 times two? 74. And now we have two times 6.5, that's 13R plus 16B equals 132. Okay, so why don't I do the 16 and the six? Um, I have no idea um, what the LCM is. I think it's 48. Is the LCM 48? Let's see. Yeah, it is. All right, so I'm gonna multiply this guy. By, how about um, negative eight to get 48. And then we'll make this guy positive 48. So we're gonna multiply him by um, three. So I should get negative 88R uh, minus 48B equals 74 times eight, so negative 592. And now I'm gonna do 39R plus 48B, you guys kind of see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the Bs, get rid of the decimals, and then get the Bs to be the same in magnitude, but opposite sign, so that when I add them, it will go away. Um, and 132 times three, what is that? 396, great. Okay, let's add these two guys. This will go away. And we get negative 88 plus 39. Negative 49R equals negative 196. Divide both sides by negative 49. And I get R equals four. I suppose I probably should have eliminated R because the question wants B. However, 11 and 13, are, their LCM is going to be really big, so I'm kind of fine with that. Okay, so R is 4. So if R is 4, I can plug that into one of the original problems, original equations. How about 6.5 times 4 plus 8B equals 66. Okay, 6.5 times four 
is 26, 66 subtract over, we get 8B equals 40 and B equals five. And that is the answer, answer choice C. Okay, there was a bunch of ways you could have done that. I don't know. There's no reason to do this one by hand at all. Let's just go to Desmos. Okay, so we're just gonna type those original equations in, but we can't use R for it to graph. We have to use X and Y. So I'm gonna do the first letter as X and the second letter as Y. Just, just don't get them mixed up. You probably should write that down somewhere on your scrap paper. Like X is raspberries, you know, equals 37. And then the second equation is 6.5 X plus eight Y equals 66. Now you can just zoom in, zoom out until you see where it intersects. It intersects right here. So X raspberries is four. And then Y, your blackberries, is five. So that would have taken you what was probably like a minute and a half at least question um, for most kids. That would have just taken you like seven seconds. So make sure you know how to do that. Let's keep going. Okay, so there's a bunch of ways to think about this one. But um, um, when you have um, Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C, I like to find the vertex using H equals, that's the X coordinate of the vertex, H equals negative B over 2A. So for this one, you really got to know that. So for this one, um, A is 1. There's no X term, so B is 0. And C is positive 55. You got to make sure you include the sign. So H equals negative zero over two times one. Well, that's just zero. Now to find K, you're gonna do F of H. So you plug it in, in this case, G, I guess, but you guys get what I'm trying to say. So F of zero. So we're gonna plug in zero. So zero squared plus 55, which is 55. And that is answer choice C. And that is right. And um, we knew that they were asking us for the min or mat for the vertex um, because the um, it says the minimum value. Um, pretty much whenever you see min or max, but like especially with quadratics, they want the vertex because that's where the min or max occurs. Now, um, uh, if it said we want the x value where the minimum takes place, you would say zero, that's your h. But because it says what's the minimum, you say k. So if it doesn't mention an x value, it wants the y value, k. All right, you can also do this one entirely on Desmos. Let's come back over here. So let's type that in exactly as it's written, g of x equals x squared plus 55. I'm gonna zoom out because I can't see it. Okay, it's right there. I'm gonna just click off to the side to see where the special points are. Okay, so the vertex is the y-intercept. So the minimum, you see it's at the bottom, that's why it's a minimum, is 55. And the x value where the minimum takes place is zero. So I have a whole Desmos video about that. Make sure you check it out. Let's keep going. Okay, so this question's a little wacky. Um, Really, all you need to do um, when you have an equation and points is start plugging in points. Now, you might be wondering, which one are we going to use first? Well, you're almost always going to want to use the one with a zero in it. If there's one point with a zero in it, you're going to want to use that first. So we're going to plug in zero comma 10. So 10 is, is y or h of x. And x is zero. Rules of exponents, anything raised to the zero power is one. Subtract one from both sides, we get B equals nine. So now all of a sudden we have this guy, H of X equals A to the X plus nine. Okay, now we can um, plug in the second point. So, um, Y is 325 over 36. And 
and x is um, negative 2. So um, first things first, we're going to subtract 9. You can just do that on a calculator. Um, I'm going to do it real quick on, on just my own here. Subtract 9 from both sides. We get 1 36 equals a to the negative 2. And you know what? a to the negative 2, rules of exponents tells us that with a negative exponent, we can have it jump over the division bar and make it positive. So this is really 1 over a squared. And hopefully you guys see, oh, a squared has to equal 36. So a has to be, you take the square root of both sides, a has to be plus or minus 6. But because they said, because they said in the question that they are positive constants, um, a is just 6. So a is 6, b is 9, a, b is 9 times 6, which is 54. And that is answer choice C. And that is correct. So um, I actually featured this question in one of my Desmos videos. This one is really, really good for Desmos. So let's, uh, you can also do this one entirely on Desmos, just coincidentally. I mean, you, you don't always have enough information to regress an equation, but this one they did. So we're going to regress it. So we're going to hit the plus and then put a table. And I'm going to put 0, 10, and then negative 2, 325 over 36. And on the next line, I'm just going to type the equation they gave us. So y1 tilde um, a to the x1 plus b. And you, you'll know you did it right, or, or you know it plotted it correctly, because um, you'll have an r squared of 1 or an r of 1. So that's really good. Um, okay, so it tells you A and B, but I don't even need to do anything. Look, A, B. And it tells me um, 54. So yeah, that is, that is really helpful. Um, if they were actually asking for the equation, I would like just type it in. I would like unhighlight this and then type it in just to make sure you understand what it is correctly, like translating that output to an equation. But you see this makes it much easier regardless. Uh, anyway, so A is 6, B is 9, A, B is 54. Could have probably did that in about 20 seconds. Now, here's the catch. They're probably going to give you ones on the actual test that two points is not enough to regress it. Maybe some equations, they need three points or something. So just keep that in mind. Uh, all right, let's move on. Okay, so for this one, um, this is um, called solving using square roots. So what I'm going to do is I see that there's a square by itself. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides because there's no x's over there. So I'm good. If there's just a number over there, I can just start taking the square root. But we can't take the square root of a negative number. So um, this equation has no real solutions because we have that annoying negative sign there. If it were zero, there would just be one solution. And if it were a positive number, it would be two solutions. Kind of like, this is kind of like where the discriminant comes from. Anyway, so the answer is D. There's a lot of ways you could have did this, but that was definitely the fastest way. You can also do this on Desmos. You can solve any equation on Desmos. So. Let's type it in. So x minus 1 squared equals negative 4. And I kind of see there's there's no vertical lines anywhere, so that's probably an issue. But what I'm going to do now is, just to be sure, I'm going to plot, do it the old-fashioned way in lesson number 1 of my Desmos playlist. y equals left-hand side, so y equals x minus 1 squared. And y equals right-hand side, y equals negative 4. And you see that those two graphs, the blue and the green, are just never going to cross. So that would be a, I think, 
I think it's far better. That's why I prioritized in the playlist doing that kind of tedious typing it out the left and the right, kind of like I just did, breaking it up into a system. Because when you look at an actual graph that means something, um, it kind of helps you understand what's going on. Whereas when you just look at those vertical lines that Desmos makes, it's not really that helpful to tell you what's going on. You're just kind of like, oh, did it, is there no solutions or did it miss one? You know, but like this way you can be sure that there's no solution. See, it's like, there's no way that green line is ever going to touch that. No way. Great. Let's keep going. Okay. This is a, um, rational expressions question. I highly recommend you look up on YouTube and watch a video on finding the LCD from rational expressions because um, it's kind of hard. Just doing one isn't going to teach it to you. Uh, anyway, so I see that my first instinct is, are either of those bottom denominators, are either of these factorable? And I see no, the 4x minus 5 doesn't have anything to pull out. The x plus 1 doesn't have anything to pull out. So um, they can't be factored. So it appears they don't have any common factors. So the LCD, it's kind of like, how two and three, the LCD is six, because you just multiply them together. We're just gonna multiply them together. Now, that's not always the case, that's just the case for this problem. So you might come across other problems where the LCD is something different, which is why I encourage you to look this up and learn more. Anyway, um, so um, the LCD is just the two denominators multiplied together. So four X minus five times X plus one. So we now need to achieve that LCD. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom of each by its missing guy. So this guy is missing 4x minus 5. So we're going to multiply him by 4x minus 5. And we're going to multiply the left one, top and bottom, by his missing guy. So x plus 1. OK, so we get um, 4 times x plus 1 over 4x over um, x plus 1, 4x minus 5. And um, minus 1 times, which is just that, right? 4x minus 5 over x plus 1, 4x minus 5. And now we are going to, um, uh, let's distribute this guy. 4 times x plus 1 is 4x plus 4. 4 times x is 4x, 4 times 1. Now, the only thing you need to be really careful of, this is what everyone forgets, and I, I'm almost certain this is one of the trap answers. You have to distribute this negative to the entire fraction. So it's really like minus 4x plus 5. You see how they get changed? They get changed because you're multiplying by negative 1. So 4x minus 4x, that goes away. And then um, 4 plus 5 is 9. So this is 9. And then when we add fractions with a common denominator, the denominator stays the same. Great. Now, you can do this one entirely on Desmos. But you should still learn how to do it if you're going for like a 700, 750, 800, because they could ask you a question where the, the answers are not the expression. So let's say it's like, oh, A, B, and then like there's a bunch of constants you need to find, kind of like the one we just did. Um, that, that could make it harder to use Desmos. Maybe you still could, but it would be harder. Uh, so anyway, knowing how to do this by hand is definitely useful. Um, let's jump to Desmos anyway. So what you're going to do is to um, figure out any equivalent expression with just x in it. Um, you're just going to plot all of them. That's it. So you're just going to type them all in. So 4 over 4x minus 5. Type in the original one in the question. And um, I'm going to go from d up. Okay. So let's type in the bottom one. d, negative 1. Just because I feel like it's kind of silly to do the correct answer first. Okay, so that blue does not perfectly replace the red, so that is not right. Let's try C. 1 over x plus 1, 4x minus 5. 
the green does not perfectly replace the red, so it's not the same expression. All right, let's look at B. 3 over 3x minus 6. Okay, does the purple perfectly replace the red? No, it does not. Not even close. Okay, let's look at A. 9 over x plus 1 times 4x minus 5. And uh, why don't we make that orange? I'll just keep it as black. So you see the black, the answer A, perfectly replaces the original graph. So that means they are indeed the same expression. They have infinitely many solutions, so they are equivalent. Equivalent is just a fancy word for infinitely many solutions. That's all it means. Like I said, guys, you still want to make sure you know how to do this just in case you get a harder question where you can't type it in. Great, let's keep going. Okay, guys, I now have many, many videos on percents. Okay, I made five shorts, and I have an Oda Cento video over an hour long on percents. So please, if you don't know what a percent multiplier is, go watch it, okay? All right, I'm just going to assume you've watched that. All right, so um, very first thing, um, decreases by 86%. That's a percent multiplier. For an increase, we would do 1 plus percent divided by 100 to find the multiplier. But for a decrease, we do 1 minus percent over 100. And um, so we're going to do 1 minus 80 over 100. And we're not going to use Desmos. I just want to show you guys this is so important. Even if this is my only video you watch, make sure you know what it is because it's on the test so many times and no one knows how to do it. Okay, so the percent multiplier is 0 0.2. Let's go back. So I don't even need to come up with an equation. Let's just um, make a table. I feel like that's the easiest way to do this. So um, f of 0, so 0, that's x. And then this guy is y. And we'll put 86. Now it says for each increase in x by 1, okay. Um, so when each when x goes up by 1, we're going to, it decreases by 8%. So we're going to multiply by our multiplier, 0.2. So we're going to multiply this guy by 0 0.2. And we get, let's see, what's 86 times 0 0.2? That is 17.2. And then we're going to multiply him again by 0 0.2, because x goes up by 1 again. And I get 3.44. And 3.44, so f of 2, you see that last one is at 2, right? So f of 2 is equal to 3.44. Um, that's a terminating decimal. And it's, it's let's see, um, this is a grid in, right? Or student producer response. One, two, three, four characters. So it's as long as it's um, five characters or less, you're good. So one, two, three, four, four characters, that's good. It'll fit. It'll let you type it in. Okay. Um... Also, guys, you could just write the equation. So um, uh, really quickly, though, one thing before I talk about that is um, uh, 3.44. There's another answer, 86 over 25, 86 slash 25, 25. That's five characters. That will also fit. So 86 over 25 would have been fine as well. Um, again, if you don't know how to simplify a fraction from a decimal, especially this messy one, I didn't know what that was, just type it in and then click on the fraction button. Uh, okay, um, there's a ton of things you could do with this, um, but um, you could even regress this on Desmos. You could put that table in Desmos, but probably what you want to understand is that this is a basic exponential function of the form a times b to the x, where a is the initial value, and b is your multiplier. I actually just made a short on this too. So the initial value is 86, and um, the multiplier is 0.2. So y equals 86 times 0.2 to the x. So they didn't need to make it f of 2. They could have gave you like f of you know, 100 or something, and you would have to come up with the equation to calculate it. So make sure you understand that. The initial value goes in front, and then the multiplier is the base of the exponent. 
the initial value is just the y value when x equals zero, or in other words, the y-intercept. Let's keep going. Okay, so I have a short on discriminant and linear quadratic systems. I think it's my first short. Uh, definitely go watch that before you do this problem. I'm going to kind of assume you've watched it. Uh, all right, so um, th there's kind of two ways you can do these. You can use the discriminant, or it's a linear quadratic system, right? The first one's a line, second one's a quadratic. Uh, so that's what this is called. So you could use the discriminant or um, when parabolas intersect a horizontal line, which this one is, that is a horizontal line at one point, they go through the vertex. Hopefully that kind of makes intuitive sense. So you could use h equals negative b over 2a. You could try to find the vertex and... And, and, you know, you could figure out the y value of the vertex and find k and, and solve it that way. And that would be fine. Um, but I want to point something out. That only works if the line is horizontal. So if you learn how to do it using the discriminant, you'll always get it right. Whereas if you only know that first way. And why learn two ways, right? It's like, it, 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 to me, that doesn't make any sense. It's like, why would I learn two ways for the same problem? I, I, I would just learn the way that um, works all the time if they're both about the same amount of work. Anyway, so I'm going to substitute for y. However, um, yeah, let, let's just get the y by itself, just for the sake of it. So y equals 4.5. We divide both sides by 2, and we'll get y equals 2.25. And now I have y by itself for both equations. Um, so we'll substitute. So 2.25 equals negative 4x squared plus bx. And now I'm going to um, move the 2.25 to the other side by subtraction. So 0 equals negative 4x squared plus bx minus 2.25. And um, now I'm going to use the discriminant. The discriminant tells us that when we have one solution, Again, it says that, right? Exactly one point. B squared minus 4AC is equal to 0. So for this one, A is negative 4. B is just B. And C is negative 2.25. So we're going to write B squared minus 4. A is negative 4. And then C is negative 2.25. So we get negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 2.25 b squared minus 36 equals 0 b squared equals 36 take the square root of both sides and we get b equals plus or minus 6 but because the question says it's a positive constant this is student produced response guys so if you put the wrong sign for it. If you didn't read it, you'd get it wrong. Okay, so um, if it said it's a negative constant, you'd have to say negative six. So B is a positive constant. So we're going to just say it is six. Let me check to make sure that is right. That is correct. Now, I think we can cook something up with Desmos. Let's see if we can do that. So let's go back over here. Um, okay, so I'm going to type in 2y equals 4.5 and y equals negative 4x squared plus bx. And I will add a slider. And oh, I already see it's somewhere over there. Oh, actually, wait, that's it. I just got it. <laughs> yeah, so you just kind of drag around until... Um, oh, and, and we figured out y is 2.25, so it should be y is 2.25, right? And b is 6, so... And then you could, like, play around with these bounds to, like, make it easier, and you could change the step. But just kind of drag until... It's probably going to be a whole number or, like, some multiple of, like, tenths or 0.25, so... Great, so you could have figured it out that way, but you definitely want to know the discriminant just in case you can't get the slider quite right. Let's keep going. 
Okay, so for scatter plots, um, really important guys, the actual y value um, comes from the dots, and the predicted y value comes from the line. So, like, if you're looking for predicted y values, you would look at this line here. But then if you were looking for actual y values, you would look at the dots themselves. So um, this one wants the at x equals 32 predicted. Uh, so um, we're going to go to 32 and we're going to go up to the um, line there, which is like right there. So it's like somewhere between two and three. And the only answer choice between two and three is 2.4. So when x equals 32, y predicted is 2.4. And um, it seems the, there's a dot there as well. So the y actual seems to be at about two. Uh, and you might be asked to compare the y predicted and y actual. So maybe there's a question like, how much greater is the actual? And you would say, oh, it's, or how much greater is the uh, predicted than the actual? And you would say 0.4, because it's 2.4 and two. So, uh, great. Well, let's keep going. Okay, for this one, we're doing percent ofs, not the same thing as percent multipliers, percent increase, decrease. This is percent of, because you see the word um, of and then of, there, right? So 40% of the items are red. So 40% of, and why don't we say there's, I don't know, um, 100 items, right? So we could do um, 40 divided by 100 is 0. 0.4. You do this on a calculator too. 40 divided by 100 is 0. 0.4. Um, times 100, so that's 40, and that's how many are red. Then it says, of the red items, 30% have stripes, so we're going to do, okay, 30% of the 40 red. So 30 divided by 100 is 0.3, so we're going to do 0.3 times 40. which is, I don't know, 12. So out of 112 of them, or 12%, you could have just kept it as percents. You didn't need to multiply by 100. I don't know. I just think that was helpful. Just do it at the beginning. Like Pretend there's 100 items. If they don't give you an amount, just pretend there's 100, or pretend there's 10. Uh, anyway, uh, so we get 12. Yeah, so really all it wanted us to do, again, was like 30% of 40% of whatever, however many we had. Let's call, let's call it X. I just made it 100. Great. Um, and I just want to point out, I go over this in all my percents videos, guys, but like it is really easy when you're stressed on a standardized test to make a careless mistake with a percent multiplier or a percent of. So even though it... This may sound silly. Do not be afraid to just type in really quick. Okay, 40 divided by 100, 30 divided by 100, and then boom, then go to your scratch paper and start writing your work. Okay, so I'm going to do 0.4 times. And I feel like that'll just save you time and stress. Let's move on. Okay, so um, this is this, they don't expect you to know this, but you honestly, these questions come up enough. They're not frequent, but they come up enough where you might just want to know this. Um, density equals mass divided by volume. You can use that to, um, I think, solve this question very easily. I'm not going to use it because what if you don't know that, right? I'm going to assume that the student going in doesn't know that. But you might just want to know that. Density equals mass divided by volume. That's kind of that's kind of helpful knowledge for lots of your schoolwork and for the test. All right. So um, they told us that it has a mass of 345 kilograms. And I'm going to treat... The um, you could also set up a ratio. Um, I'm just going to treat the density as a unit conversion, so I'm going to do 353 kilograms per 
one cubic meter, but I'm kind of going to put it upside down so that the units of kilograms cancel because they're on opposite sides of the division sign. Go watch my Otocento on um, unit conversions. I go over this. So let's see, 345 over 353. Um, and oh yeah, by the way, I should go over this. Yeah, just, just do not do any of that. Whenever you do a unit conversion, do not do it in your head. Type it exactly as written. You have the power of Desmos now to make it nice and easy to see. So um, it's 0.977 cubic meters. So let's go back over here. So 0 0.977 meters cubed. Now, um, this is... Um, Uh, it says a sample is in the shape of a cube. So we're, what we are going to do is um, a cube um, um, has a surface area of 6s squared and a volume of s cubed. So um, 0.977 meters cubed, that is a volume. So we're going to plug that in for V and then to get Um, S by itself, we're going to take the cube root of both sides, um, which is the cube root. Let, let's do it on Desmos, because you guys probably want to know how to type in a cube root. Um, so um, a cube root, you go into the functions menu, and then it's like all the way at the bottom, and through. So cube root of 0 0.977. Okay, so that gives us an S of 0 0.99 meters, because it's a length. Um, great. Now, guys, you really should know. I don't even care if you know how to type in a cube root. It doesn't come up that often. Square root, you should know, SQRT. Oops. SQRT. Um, there's also one for cube root, I think. So um, SQRT. And then I think for cube root, it's CBRT. Let's see if that works. So square root of three. Yep. And I do CBRT. Yep. So if you can remember that, that's helpful. Whenever you're typing on Desmos, there's lots of shortcuts. Now, um, you probably want to also know that the square root is the one half power and the cube root is the one third power because that comes up on questions. So it's like, you really want to know that. So everyone asks, well, how do I type in a cube root? I'm like, do you know how to type in one third? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, well, then you know. <laughs> uh, all right, anyway, well, let's keep going. Okay, um, two nearby trees are perpendicular to the ground. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a big tree and then a little tree. And then um, kind of, you know, it's kind of gonna be something like that. And they're perpendicular, so I'll put some right angles. One of these trees is 10 feet tall and has a shadow that's five feet long. And the other tree has a shadow that's two feet long. Okay, so, um, uh, the big tree is the 10 feet tall one. So let's let's label that. So this is 10. This whole thing, his shadow is, again, like the sun's like up here, right? And it's like casting shadows that way. So his shadow is um, five feet long. And then the shadow of the little guy is two feet long. And we want to know how tall is the other tree. So that's this guy. So we're going to call him X. These are called nested triangles. Almost always, whenever you see nested triangles on the test, a lot of the time, the vast majority of the time, they're testing you on similar triangles. Similar triangles. So um, we are going to do big over small, corresponding big over corresponding small. For the big overall triangle with the small overall triangle. So keep in mind, guys, this here, that is not a triangle. That We're not going to use that. We'll use the big one and the tiny one. 
Okay, great. So big over small. So big is 10. The guy that goes with him on the small triangle is X. And then the big bottom side is 5. And the small bottom side is 2. Great. Um, now we're just going to cross multiply. Um, so 2 times 10 is 20. And 5 times X is 5X. We divide both sides by 5, and we get X equals 4. And that is answer choice B. And that is correct. There's not really much else you can do with Desmos aside from... Um, uh, you know, maybe typing that equation in, but you still had to come up with the picture and come up with the equation. I suppose you could also guess and track and, and just kind of use logic. Like, okay, how is, like, oh, first of all, D has got to be wrong. How is the smaller tree going to have a bigger, how is the smaller shadow tree going to have a, going to be taller? That doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, maybe you could use your number sense to cross off eight as well. Like eight and be like, that's eh, like, that's kind of that's kind of high. It's like I would expect it to maybe have a bigger shadow than two, if that were the case, right? So you could maybe cross off that one, and then you'd have a 50-50 guess. But um, it's way better if you understand similar triangles. And um, I wouldn't type this equation in Desmos. It's just it was faster to do by hand. It didn't take long. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, another geometry problem. So we're going to draw a rectangle and a diagonal. And um, uh, this guy is 5 root 17. And the length of the rectangle shorter side is 5. And we want to find the length of the rectangle's longer side. So why don't we call that x? And we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, which is on the reference sheet. Um, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse. a and b are the legs. c is the hypotenuse. So c has to be the one across from the 90 degree angle. So that one has to be c. Okay, so um, why don't we do um, x squared plus 5 squared equals, and then c is uh, 5 root 17. This is how they get you guys. This is why everyone would get this wrong. They'd go to type this in their calculator and they'd type it in wrong. Remember what I said, when you plug in an, when you plug in a value into an equation, you have to um, use parentheses, especially if there's a coefficient or a power. Like in this case, two, there's a power. So we're gonna put parentheses five root 17 squared. Okay, now I'm not gonna solve this on Desmos. You can, you can just type that equation in and click on it for the answer, but we're, we're gonna do the whole thing. So, um, but I, I do know that, you know, five squared is 25, but I don't know what five root 17 squared is. So I'm going to type that in five SQRT 17 tab parentheses squared, like lots of people, they would have typed in this and it, I guess it gives you the same. Did it give me the same? That's 85. Yeah, didn't give you the same thing. See, so um, that would have been wrong. So lots of people would have made that mistake. And that that's maybe where one of the trap answers comes from. So um, uh, not sure, but that, that seems right to me. Uh, okay, um, so 5 root 17 squared. So now we just, that's what you always do for Pythagorean theorem is you figure out what the squares are. Okay, x squared plus 25 equals 425. Great, let's come back over here. Now we're going to subtract 25 from both sides. And we get x squared equals 400. Now we're going to take the square root of 400. And that is 20. So because this came out nicely, you really could have just typed it in. I'll go over in a second. Hold on. So plus or minus 20, but side lengths can't be negative. So it's just 20. And that is answer choice B. And that is correct. Um, now, if you wanted to say, skip some steps, the second you get the equation, 
um, you could um, just type it in. Uh, my Desmos is acting, my internet's acting up. Give me one second. Oh, we're good, I think. Okay, x squared plus five squared equals five SQRT 17 squared. Okay, I can't see where the answers are, so I'm gonna zoom out. Okay, 20 and negative 20, but we said side lengths can't be negative. So it's 20, so you, you, I don't know, that would have saved you a little bit of time, right? But you still had to know that you had to put parentheses around that five root 17, so make sure you put parentheses when you're substituting. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so um, you do probably want to know the equations for arc length and sector area um, in degrees. So theta over 360 times 2 pi r. And the sector area is theta over 360 times the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. You definitely want to know those. However, when the question is not asking you for the arc length of the sector area, um, you might just be better off using some kind of proportion. So part over whole. Part over whole. That's what I'm going to do. So let's do, um, this question is about length of arc. So we're going to do an arc length proportion. So arc length is a part of the circumference. And then theta over 360. If you were doing a sector area proportion, you could do um, sector area over the area is equal to theta over 360, like that. See what I'm doing, guys? Part over whole, and then I do theta over 360, because that's part over whole. There's 360 degrees in a circle. Anyway, so now that we know that, um, we pretty much just need to plug stuff in. So um, the measure of the uh, the measure of arc AB is forty five. So the measure of the arc in degrees is the same as the central angle. So theta is forty five, and it says the length of the arc is three. And we want to find the circumference. So uh, let's just uh, cross multiply. So 3 times 360. It's 1080. And then 45 times C, that's 45C. Divide both sides by 45. And we get C equals 24. Make sure the units are the same. It is in inches. So, um... That should give us answer choice D, which is correct. Not really a whole lot you could do with Desmos. I mean, you could solve the equation on Desmos, but again, you see that one didn't take so long. What was more important was that we understood the concept that um, arc length and um, sector area uh, are defined as a fraction of the degrees the arc measures in that circle. Great, let's wrap up. Okay, that completes the lesson. Please like and subscribe for more digital SAT math content. If you're interested in my tutoring services, the link to my website will be in the description. I tutor SAT math on all math subjects from about seventh grade to AP slash early college level. Thanks for stopping by and good luck studying.